keep track of what is coming in and what is going out. I like any given moment, you will know like what your business is worth, what type of revenue you have, what type of um, expenses you have. I keep you more accurate throughout the year instead of just once a year knowing like what you made last year instead of right now. Welcome to the Wear Wag Repeat podcast. I'm Tori Mystic. As a dog mom lifestyle expert, blogger, and business owner, I love talking to other women in the pet industry and sharing their advice with you every week. Sit, stay, and listen to the latest episode. In this episode, I'm talking to Goldie Kretschmar, who is a bookkeeper specializing in the pet industry. She works with dog trainers, groomers, pet sitters, and more to make sure that they know how much money is coming in and how much is going out each month. She has so many great tips that you can use in your own business, whether you manage your books yourself or if you outsource it. And I don't know about you guys, but whenever I need to hire someone in my business, it makes such a difference if they're a dog mom. They just know where I'm coming from. By the way, I have added a lot of the resources that Goldie mentions in this episode to the Wear Wag Repeat Resource Guide. The resource guide is full of over 150 different apps, programs, books, even the best squeaker to get the perfect little head tilt in your dog's photos. If you don't already have free access or if you need to get access again, go to wearwagrepeat.com slash guide and I will email you an exclusive link to get into the resource guide. Goldie Kretschmar is the owner of Pedigree Bookkeeping, a virtual bookkeeping service dedicated to pet businesses. Goldie is a pet parent to two dogs and one cat. She's also a stay-at-home, homeschooling mother of four with ages ranging from seven months to 15 years old. Wow. She loves making memories with her family, which is why being a virtual business is so important to her. Hey, Goldie. Hi. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having me, Tori. Thank you so much for being here. Um, I am like so impressed just by reading your bio. You like seem to have a very busy life. (laughs) I do. <laughs> yeah. Yep, definitely. Yeah, there's always sports or school or business or something going on. <laughs> yeah, it sounds like it. Well, and you're way ahead of the game with the homeschooling because I know that right now everyone is scrambling to see if they yeah. can figure out how to do homeschooling. So yeah. um, I guess, you know, you're way ahead <laughs> in that area. <laughs> Definitely got to jump on that. That's for sure. Yeah, that's very helpful, at least in 2020. (laughs) (laughs) So, um, so you've obviously been been doing a lot of stuff like working from home um, as a stay at home mom also for like 15 years. How how long have you been doing virtual bookkeeping? Uh, Well, I have a background in accounting. so I went to college for those courses and things like that. But um, I also have uh, experience in the auditing side of um, the accounting equation. <laughs> um, but as far as bookkeeping for my business, I have actually just started uh, just earlier this year. Okay. I started my own, own uh, business, so... They're fairly new, but I I do have a background in it. So I just kind of wanted to branch out on my own. Yeah. No, I think it's great. I Working for yourself and like having that kind of freedom and being able to work virtually is just so great. Yeah, it was, it was actually very difficult um, going to a 40-hour a week job. And so for 15 years, like I wasn't a stay-at-home mom, but that oh. was the difficult part. Yeah, you know, so um, things are looking up now. <laughs> oh, good. Well, yeah. then I totally misinterpreted. That's okay. I probably just uh, that's gone. okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad I'm glad that you're doing what you want to do now. Um, so, how did you decide to focus on the pet niche because it's very specific? Well, um, so when I was deciding um, what 
I wanted to dedicate my business to, uh, I, I see, uh, law bookkeeping, I see contract bookkeeping, I see real estate bookkeeping, but I didn't really see too much that was specific to the pet industry. So I just felt like it was very underserved and I wanted to jump in there. (laughs) Are, Are there any kinds of like types of pet industry businesses that you seem to gravitate towards more? Uh, A lot is groomers and trainers. Um, Definitely, those are probably the bigger portion, but those are also the ones that like to do it themselves. (laughs) So there's definitely that. Um, The those are the ones I I probably mostly have are the groomers and the trainers. Yeah. Well, it's that's a huge area. I think of the pet industry. Just I know for myself, like you know, prowling around on Instagram, there are just a million Mm -hmm. groomers and trainers and then, Mm -hmm. you know, dog sitters. sitters. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. There seems to be no limit. So that's a very good niche to, to pick out, I think. Um, Mm -hmm. Okay. Now I have kind of like a stupid question. I know there's no stupid questions, but (laughs) I've never had a bookkeeper at all. So can you actually just like explain what a bookkeeper does? <laughs> yeah, definitely. Well, there's the the thing where people get a bookkeeper and an accountant kind of mixed up or they don't know the difference. Um, accountant's going to be more like if you're the kind of person that just wants to, at the end of the year, throw your, your receipts and your all your expenses at them, they'll do that in a rush. They'll charge you high for it. And they'll do your taxes and and all that stuff kind of encompassing. But what I do is I keep you organized throughout the year, day by day. Like, I don't do taxes. I don't bother with that. Um, That's a CPA. That's an accountant. That's an EA. I, like, keep track of what is coming in and what is going out. So on, especially with like QuickBooks being um, online and virtual and cloud-based, I like any given moment, you will know like what your business is worth, what type of revenue you have, what type of um, expenses you have. And you can definitely get the financial reports um, faster and more accurate. I keep you more accurate throughout the year instead of just once a year knowing like what you'd made last year instead of right now. Right. Well, and I think that, um, you know, as like a, anyone who's a solopreneur, I know there's a lot of Mm -hmm. like small businesses and micro businesses who listen to this podcast. Um, just looking at like your bank account is not necessarily going to be an accurate representation of what's coming in and going out. No, not at all. Not at all. Uh, because you could have money, in your bank account, but you still have bills that are due. So technically that money is not a profit. It's not what you have, you know, it, it's, it's still expensed out. So that's not going to be a clear picture. So yeah, that's it. Bookkeeping definitely keeps a very clear picture of your profits and your revenue and everything. And so you're looking at it every single month and telling people like exactly mm-hmm. where they stand every month. Every month. Um, I prefer to do uh, a once a month meeting. And I don't just, I noticed a lot of bookkeepers um, in any niche um, just kind of hands over, if they even do it, they kind of just hand over the financial reports, which is your balance sheet, your income statement. Um, and then I even go as far as doing a statement of cash flows. And so a lot of them will just hand them over. Wait, what does that mean? What does that mean? (laughs) (laughs) A balance sheet is where I make sure all of um, your, the accounts, all of the the records are balanced from your expenses to your assets and all, and your equity, make sure that's all balanced. And then um, the income statement gives a very specific view of, literally like what is coming in as your revenue and what is going out as your um, expenses and then what is your profit that one gives you your profit that's a pretty important one and then the case the statement of cash flows um, 
does it uh, does it similar, but it's it's more detailed because the income statement will still have uh, your assets, your liabilities, and your equity in there. And those all need to balance as well. And then it'll flow over into the cash flows. And it, it's very specific on uh, your revenue and your expenses. And that gives you your bottom line. And yeah. then, um, bookkeepers, if they even do even two out of those three, just kind of hand them to the, the business owner and call it good. <laughs> but most business owners don't know how to read it, don't know what this means or that means or whatever. And so I personally, once a month, will do um, a meeting with all my clients to go over it. See if they've got any questions or anything like I, yeah. So I like to make sure that my clients really understand more about their business instead of just throw them some financial statements. Yeah. Well, I mean, I try my best to understand these types of things, but mm-hmm. it is very confusing. And I specialize in a lot of things, but numbers is not one of them. <laughs> um, and I know that everyone listening, like you, everyone has like their thing that they're a rock star at, whether it's like yep. you can get a dog to loose leash walk or something like that. Um, or you do a really amazing groom on a poodle or, you know, whatever mm-hmm. it is you're not necessarily, you shouldn't be expected to also be like a financial expert. So this is such a good thing to outsource. And it's one of the few things that people do outsource in this um, niche because it's usually they're small businesses. So they feel like they could do it themselves. You know, it's not going to take much time, but it ends up taking more time than they really want to put into. You know, I like the numbers. I like pets. You go to your grooming and training and I'll support you with your numbers. (laughs) Well, and I think that's an important thing to point out. Like whenever I hire outsource anything and hire anyone for anything, it makes such a difference to have someone who is a pet lover and a dog mom because like they are just going to understand where you're coming from so much better. And when they see your expenses for like the vet or grooming or whatever, they're not going to be like, you need to cut that out. (laughs) Right, right. They're not going to see it as like um, an unnecessary uh, expense or or anything like that. They're going to understand more of what your specific business needs are. Right. Well, and I also wanted to ask you, like when people start, like when, if someone starts to keep track every month um, or starts working with you and they're looking at their numbers every month, do you think that they make more money in the long haul because they're paying close attention to what, what's happening? I think it, you definitely are more able to customize on uh, where you want to do your own cuts, where you want to spend more money or less money. And so in the long run, yeah, I think definitely in the long run, it could either save you money or redirect where you spend your money to grow and improve your business. Yeah. So what kind of tips do you have, like bookkeeping tips specific to pet industry businesses? Uh, well, definitely have the bookkeeping software. That is something that <laughs> I've come across so many that just don't even have, like have it on paper. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. They have a shoebox full of receipts and they think that's that. <laughs> is there a software that you recommend specifically? Uh, I personally do QuickBooks Online. But um, there are several others. There's Zero. There's Accounting Suite. There's even there's NetSuite. Um, bookkeeping is kind of bookkeeping, you know. Uh, it's different applications for the same thing. So um, if you have a software, it's fairly easy to um, pick up in any application for me. Um, definitely have a point of sale system that. Uh, easily integrates with your accounting software because that makes things so much easier because your point of sale software is going to like your accounting software is going to pull in the reports from your point of sale software. So it's going to be a lot easier 
and to get your sales and and all that kind of stuff in your into your bookkeeping instead of doing it manually instead of you know yeah. just telling me oh I had you know thousand dollars in sales and then go put in a little journal entry this at least I have proof I have a you know, a follow the trail I got a paper trail so this right week. so like if you have a um if you're a dog trainer for instance and your clients I'll pay you in cash which would be great. Make sure to put an entry in some kind of point of sale system instead of just yes. like pocketing your cash. <laughs> yes, that would be that would be ideal, definitely, because then it, like I said, I can follow I can follow it, and so can the IRS. <laughs> if there's oh, sort you of have to bring up the IRS. Yep, yep, yep <laughs> definitely. You gotta have some sort of electronic trail, and if you can definitely take your cash and put it into some sort of point of sale system like that, that makes it even better. Yeah, and you're gonna know you'll have a better idea of what you're making, how you could make exactly. more, or oh, whatever yeah. you want to do. Mm-hmm. Because you know, cash is you know great. <laughs> Don't get me wrong, cash is amazing, but. You know, you it's can, hard to keep track of. It is. It yeah. is. You know, you can be like, oh, well, I made a hundred this day. Well, I think maybe a couple of days ago I made, you know, 150 or, you know, you just you get to a point where you don't know if you're not writing it down or if you're not, you know, keeping track of it somehow. Yeah. Then then there's all sorts of inaccuracies. Yeah, definitely. So how about are there any big mistakes that you see people make all the time? Uh yeah, <laughs> there. <laughs> there's no a few of them. There. <laughs> there's definitely a few of them. Um, first off, trying to do the bookkeeping on your own. That's that's a huge mistake. I know it sounds and seems like, oh well, I can just you know write down what I made here and write down my bills here and equals there. There's a lot more to it than that. Definitely. Um, one huge thing is they mix their personal bank account and their business bank account. They mix those transactions. And that's a huge no-no because it's very difficult to keep um, your personal fi- uh, expenses and your personal purchases separate from the business. And it really is, you know, by by law that you your business is a separate entity. So it needs to be kept separate. I know it's very tempting to take that business card, you know, the business account card and and go make that purchase um, for your personal products. But um, right. try, try to refrain from that so much. It's a very bad habit. Yes, very. And then another thing is, you know, we all think of taxes as, you know, that once a year, you know, once a year, pay taxes, good. Well, actually, for being an entrepreneur, for being, you know, solopreneur, all that stuff, you, actually, a lot of people don't realize you're supposed to pay quarterly. And so I do that. Um, I'm proud yeah. to say I do that. Yay! <laughs> Yeah, quarterly taxes is something a lot of um, business owners don't really think about, don't know about sometimes. And then because of that, when they go in for their yearly taxes, uh, they're incurring penalties. Mm -hmm. So if you set aside um, taxes, um, like on a regular basis, like even have a separate account, you know, you've got your business account and then you've got a separate bank account just for taxes from for your business and just use it like a savings account and put that in there and then as you go when by the time your taxes are due bam done you don't you already have it you don't have to scramble for how much and this and that and everything so i think that's a big mistake is they don't save for their taxes because yeah. they don't know it's supposed to be quarterly well, talking about having like a, a separate bank account and everything, I have to ask, have you ever um, read the book or heard about Profit First? Um, Mike McKinowitz or something like that is his name? Yeah, I've heard of it. I haven't read it, but I have heard about it. You should check yeah. it out and everyone who's listening should check it out because um, 
I actually listened to the audiobook um, since I walk the dog so much. Um, I just listened to the audiobook, but getting to physical book would be a lot better because you know, there's like worksheets and like you have to write down percentages and numbers and you really can't do that in your head while you're walking your dog. Um, but it it breaks it down like that. And he recommends doing the same thing is like find whatever bank – it, maybe it's not the bank that you already use. You might have to go to a different bank that mm-hmm. allows you to have these like, you know, very low balance, like no minimum balance, mm-hmm. like free checking mm-hmm. accounts. Yeah. And mm-hmm. yeah. And set up an account where you put your taxes, set up an account where you put your profits, set up in another account where you put other, like he's like, he wants you to have like five different accounts set up, um, which was a little too overwhelming for me to actually go, go through with and do. Um, yeah. But it's it's really – it's just a great way to start thinking about, like, that money that you're going to have to pay in taxes eventually, either quarterly or annually, however you do it, you need to set it aside because yeah. you're not going to have it forever. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's, that's kind of, you know – a basis for bookkeeping I would say as well because you've got those different accounts that you're you know putting money in money's coming in or going out based on your profit uh, account or your expense account or your tax account like that all you got to do is set those accounts up and then your bookkeeper can take care of the rest (laughs) Oh, yes. yes, That would make it much easier. Yeah, because all of, especially QuickBooks, you can um, connect your bank accounts to the software. So periodically, or hopefully reliably, (laughs) it should download the transactions into your software, your accounting software. Uh, from your bank. That way I could, as a bookkeeper, can match to make sure things um, balance and reconcile. And with if you've got those five accounts, as long as they're connected to your accounting software, then that's definitely something myself as a bookkeeper would keep track of more than, than you just you hit the button a, and it'll transfer it around yeah. where it needs to go. Yeah. Oh, well, everyone, that is very interesting information. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then, yeah, and that's where I come in. And, you know, you don't have to sit there and stress over five different accounts that becomes overwhelming yeah you know i i can come in with you know this financial statements and all that stuff and and work it all out for you yeah well that's awesome because it makes like sense it makes sense in my head to do it that way but then practically i was like i can't this is too much yeah Mm -hmm. definitely but um as a bookkeeper i'm already keeping track of hundreds of accounts um, not bank accounts, but accounts in, in the software. I'm already keeping track of hundreds of accounts. So five bank accounts is really, as long as it stays connected to the accounting software, it's right. It's yeah, you just have to like refresh it occasionally or something. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that, that's a big part of what I do. That's a big basis is I reconcile and make sure that your bank account transactions match your what should be in your accounting software and as long as those match that's that's what we're doing can you give an example of why it wouldn't match up um if something hasn't gone through your account yet um in the bank or if in the the accounting software um something wasn't put in correctly Mm -hmm. like uh, if you had a a bill to pay but you didn't get the invoice or you lost the invoice. And so now it's not in there, but you paid that, you paid that bill with the bank account. So now Uh, you're going to be off whatever that bill is. I see. I see. It's a lot. There is a huge paper trail to keep track of. Huge. Yes, definitely. (laughs) Definitely. But I am thankful for the age of (laughs) cloud-based because you QuickBooks has an app where you can just take a snap of all your receipts and it uploads and it's, it's makes it so much easier for the, the business owner. Yeah. Mobile apps, like the mobile banking apps where you can just like mm-hmm. deposit checks and stuff. Oh my God. What yeah. a lifesaver. Yeah, definitely. So well, there's as- definitely. Go, sorry. Go of, ahead. It's okay. Sorry. <laughs> there's definitely plenty of, uh, online, uh, business bank accounts that actually will let you, um, 
open multiple accounts under one. And so it definitely is um, conducive to the profit first. Yeah, the profit um, first system. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, so we're just about to head into Q4 when this episode comes out, um, fourth quarter. So like, do you have any tips for pet businesses to kind of, you know, get everything, everything organized before the year is over? If like yeah. they've made it, cause this year has kind of been like a lot going on. So, yeah. Yeah. Definitely. <laughs> um, like what can someone do in the last couple of months of 2020, to, you know, set themselves up for the best success next year? Uh, If you don't have a bookkeeper, get one (laughs) now, because um, you're already going to be behind in anything. So we've got, we're in July, you're going to be at least six months, six and a half months behind in any bookkeeping. Mm -hmm. And if you've tried to do it yourself, then it's just a cleanup because we know you probably are not fantastic with numbers because we love the animals, you know. <laughs> but um, so there's going to already be catch up and clean up, you know. So it's going to be if you save that for the end of the year, that's a year's worth that your accountant has to to manage. So, so like, that's going to be pricey. To say, if I were to say, like, what's the best time of year? to hire a bookkeeper, it would be yesterday. <laughs> yes, definitely. <laughs> definitely. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, yeah, just, you know, prepare for those taxes. You know, it once you know what your revenue is, you can estimate those quarterly taxes. Um, just know where your business stands. And with knowing where your business stands and being prepared and having these financial statements, when you know, those that were prepared already and this coronavirus hit and everything went into lockdown and then the government uh, was allowing for these PPP loans and the, uh, what is the EI, EIDL loans, those that were already up on their bookkeeping, no problem. Like they took it to the bank, done. And all your paperwork already ready. Yeah, mm-hmm. but those that didn't have bookkeepers were some of the last to even apply. They were stressed out. It took them longer. Some of them didn't even get the loan because they passed the deadline because now you're trying to hand a bookkeeper a year's worth of, um, you know, accounting or bookkeeping. And you just, sometimes it's just impossible to get it in, in the short amount of a deadline. Yeah. Um, Definitely. Well, before we, before we wrap up this conversation, I have to ask you about your pets. So, um, so tell us all about your, you have two dogs and one cat. So tell us about them. All right. So I have, um, my, my big dog, he's a, um, lab and pit mix and he's a, that like orangey copper color. Yeah. And his name is copper. (laughs) <laughs> my kids actually named him after um fox and the hound oh yeah the little dog the copper and he goes oh, woo, woo, woo. yeah they love that <laughs> um he's oh goodness he's gonna be five this year actually uh because i we i got him when i was pregnant with um my third so and she's gonna be five in october Oh wow! So he, I got them together so they can grow up together. Aww. Um, he loves to play with the oranges in my orange trees. He uses he, he throws them around like a ball. <laughs> <laughs> Pick them up off the ground. You, I'll commonly see him walking around the yard with just an orange in his mouth. Does he eat it? Sometimes. Oh, <laughs> but he, he, he'll mostly just play with it. He'll throw it up in the air and all this stuff. It's well, that's cute. a California dog for you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my dogs would not we live in pennsylvania they would not know what to do if they found an orange line on the ground <laughs> what is that <laughs> so strange <laughs> um then i have my second dog she is a border collie and corgi mix oh wow so she's got the corgi stature so she's real short um but she looks like a border collie She's, oh my she's black and white, like a border collie. Her face is, um, looks like a border collie. Um, she's just stature of a, 
um, corgi, and it's cute because usually corgi's ears stick straight up. Hers actually, the tips fold over. Like the border collie part, I guess. Like the border collie. Yeah. yeah. So, it's, and do unless they, looking up at you, then her ears pop up. <laughs> <laughs> do they get along well with the cat? Uh, the, actually, Daisy, which is my my uh, little dog, she loves the cat. Like they will play with each other. Like they run That's and play amazing. tag throughout the house. Yeah. Like. At first, I thought it was, they were, like, fighting and chasing each other. And then I realized they were playing. <laughs> That's so amazing. Yeah. I just saw them um, just the other day out out my backyard. Um, I let the cat out uh, of the house. And it went right up to Daisy. And they almost looked like they were, like, kissing or oh. they were sniffing each other and just being super cute. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. And well, then, it's probably nice to be home with them and then my cat uh nia she i don't know she, if you just I, heard lucy, lucy is yeah. like making a lot of noises behind me yeah uh nia my cat she um she's black and white so i have a matching cat and dog <laughs> and those are the ones that get along oh they're like brothers from another mother right they're girl they're both girls yeah they're both from girls. another mister <laughs> There you go. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, oh, man, she she loves being outside. Oh, she's a good hunter, though. She gets all the gophers on the property. And, yeah, she used to bring them to my doorstep. Like, look at me. Surprise. Like, thanks. <laughs> yeah. uh... You go take care of that. <laughs> <laughs> well, Goldie, it has been so fun talking to you. You've really inspired me to kind of get more organized with my finances. And I hope everyone listening is inspired too. This is such a great time of year. Like you said, there's no time like the present. Like today is the best time to get your finances organized. Right, right. So tell everyone where they can learn more about you and your business. Um, tell us what your website is. Uh, yeah, uh, my website is it's just a real simple website. It's a pedigreebookkeeping.com. Uh, you can definitely find me on Google, and you can find me in, on Facebook at Pedigree Bookkeeping. You can definitely find me there. That's probably my biggest platform. I um, mean, I take appointments from there. You can see my services, even ask me questions or message me from there. Um, oh, good. So, That's how I yeah. met you was through a Facebook group that we were both yep. in. So. Yeah. Um, everybody go find Goldie somewhere on <laughs> Facebook. <laughs> and, um, yeah, thanks so much for being on the show. Thank you for having me. What did you like most about this episode? Find me on Instagram at team mystic and let me know what intrigued you or what questions you have about starting or growing your own dog inspired business. You can also screenshot this episode and tag me in your stories. I love to see who is listening out there. Some of the best conversations happen after the episode, right? So track me down over on Instagram or join the Wear, Wag, Repeat Labs Facebook group to connect with other dog-obsessed entrepreneurs. And as always, you can find all the links and resources discussed in this episode at wherewagrepeat.com slash podcast. See you back here next week.